Commissioner Charlene Wynn. Commissioner Roland Orego. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. With that, would you please stand and say the thing that we need Roland, did you read this so much? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, before us, uh, we have an agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I have someone. I'll second. That's first and the second. First by Roland and second by Ms. Bustos. All in favor, Sam. I need mean, to have a roll call vote for, for a Nobody's on Zoom. You can just do all the okay. yeah. All right. Motion carries. The agenda is approved. Are there any matters from the commission before we go? <laughs> No. Okay. Um, any public comments before we get people that are on the agenda speak tonight? Okay. So action items, a new business. Before we begin, uh, let me make a read a statement that we have to read uh, by our legal department. So the following cases are quasi-judicial in nature, and the hearing will be conducted under provisions required by the New Mexico Court of Appeals. This includes the identification of parties and the swearing in of all those who wish to provide testimony. The opportunity to cross-examination to ask questions will be provided to all parties. So I'm going to open this public hearing. It is now 6.03, and this is case number 2023-02, special use request for special use review. Edadetta applicant requests approval for special use permit on a 20 foot by 22 foot detached carport already built on property currently addressed at 453 Calle Don Leandro. The separate property is located in the R6 Urban Residential District. So um, you're gonna be speaking then on behalf of the city and Jordan who will be also speaking. Uh, can I please have you folks stand and uh, swear? So do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth? Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Okay, Vince, if you would please uh, present your case. Good afternoon, Chair Trujillo, members of the commission. Um, tonight's meeting is uh, to be heard on case number 223 02. The applicant is Ed 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 Let me give you a note. Let, let, let Mr. JD have a time to say hi, JD. Come on in, are you feeling all right? Say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll correct the uh, other lady. I'm oh, sorry, that's why it's so. Yes, let me give you a brief update from the February 9th, 2023 meeting for case number 2023 02. Special use request. Ed applicant is requesting a special use permit for the construction of a custom built wooden frame carport extending out from the front of his home, located at 453 Calle Don The property is owned R6, Urban Residential District. The required front setback in that district is 30 feet. The applicant's completed construction currently encroaches into the setback, resulting in a front setback of four inches. <laughs> So if you turn to your third page. But can you, excuse me, I'm not, I just want to get, but I want to get the record straight here. So according to the IOR, he is approaching over on the right of way. Yes, okay, so. yes. That's, so that's what we have submitted so far is the LI, ILR. Um, we also received a Mexico CID building permit application which the planning department signed off on. If you look at the submittals that I just handed out, it's an email between myself and Mr. Julian Gonzalez with CID. The first one for April 13th, that's highlighted on the top. He states that the city is okay with the placement of the structure 
He will need to fill out an application for permit, which needs a signature from the city. He will then need to bring it to CIE for permit approval. We will then inspect it for compliance. If you look down at the April 18 email, it says protocol is before anyone submits the permit. Before you go on, uh, we need a copy of this for Mr. Martinez. The email? The email, yeah. Your information. Yeah. Okay, so back to the April 18th email. It states protocol is before anyone submits for permit, an application is to be signed by planning and zoning of any jurisdiction where work is to be performed. A permit will not be issued without this signature. Two sets of plans is required at this at the time of submission. We have not received an uh, email or the permit back from CID or Mr. Herrera for from CID. We do um, we did receive the ILR from Mr. Tomar who was a licensed surveyor here in town. And it does also indicate that it encroaches on the right of way easement and is a violation of the R6 15 foot front setback requirement. You mean 30 foot? Excuse me? You mean 30 foot front setback requirement? For a accessory structure? Not just 30 feet or Okay, yes, you're correct. Sorry. Um, there was also um, some mention about the HOA, the CCRs being submitted by Mr. Herrera. Those were reported with Rio River County. Um, the HOA has not convened in 13 years since the developer passed away. The HOA has not collected any fees. Uh, the Marty's Meadows HOA CCRs are still valid. No dissolution documents are recorded with New England County clerk or an MSOS. Therefore, Mr. Herrera is in violation of Article B1. Garages and carports are subject to review and approval by Marty's Meadows Planning Commission. Therefore, the Planning Department sticks to its original decision for denial of case 2023-02. Any questions, commissioners? Chair Creel? Any questions from the commission for this webinar? Uh, Mr. Bob, no. You, you mentioned uh, in your documents, you have a letter that went out to, to the neighbors, right? It's a, the very last document that we think. Yes, you get any responses from any of the neighbors other than that they not being here? I have not got any response from any neighbors uh, for or against the. Were you able to locate any of the HOA member, like uh, Ms. Armstrong or anything yeah. like that? Mr. Salazar, we did not get a hold of um, Ms. Kelly Cook, Ms. Kelly Armstrong. We did get a hold of Gerald Martinez, is the original property owner. We got a hold of Ger Gerald Martinez, his daughter. Okay. He is out in Arizona. She explained to us since her father passed away, the HOA has not had any meetings. And I believe that was. Thirteen years ago. 
Just want to make sure that you did uh, uh, you did contact people both in the neighborhood and in the, in, in the HOA. So you gave it that right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I looked. I was kind of checking on that HOA today, and it shows that it was dissolved. Um, Dolores Royball was the agent for that HOA, the original agent of record. So I don't think that they had any kinds of meetings or any, any activity for quite some time now. So if you look at look it up on the internet, it, it shows that it was dissolved. So I don't know what that means. No, I don't know. Um, on the that. Secretary of State? Yeah, on the website. Well, when you file any kind of those documents, you have to go in yearly and pay a ten dollar. No, I have to file a report. Right, also. you file a report. None of that has been so done. they that's haven't been that's what it shows that. Yeah, they terminate it or they dissolve it. But as you said, Vince, that um, but officially from their side, there has been no documents uh, for a dissolution or anything filed. Nothing that we have found, commissioners. We have filed in Miriam County. Just wanted to make that note. Sure, sure. No, 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 no. Any other questions from the commission or comments? So, or okay. so that's just uh, to get a little bit more uh, back on the history of the project. So this project was started without permits, correct? Church of yes, that is correct. It's been completed without permits. And in fact, uh, the the application for that carport was denied originally is that also correct that is correct and mr Edda was issued a stop order on that project uh, by code enforcement if i understand you know if that's correct that is correct Church review yeah. the the denial permit is attached to your packet also and the setback requirement even if the ccr are not in effect let's say that they're not in effect. According to the information we received, there was no record of them being dissolved. But let's say, let's say, not even considered the CPR. His, the setbacks for the R6 for accessory structures is 30 feet. Is that correct? For accessory structure, that is correct. Okay. Sure. Could you that's 30 feet? If it's attached to the house, that takes it down to 15 feet. Right. And the uh, ILR that was uh, prepared by uh, Tom Maragon, I believe that was the name of the surveyor. Correct. He has the uh, carport encroaching on the right of way access. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So, um, with that, Mr. Uh, let's see if I can do that to you. I, I requested some legal opinions today, and you can maybe share what you can uh, uh, from the attorney on. The situation. So, at the request of uh, Mr. Trujillo, I contacted the city attorney and asked him about this case. And you all laid out guidelines for him to bring the paperwork into you and show that it was legal by his covenants, that it was that he had the permits that he was doing what he was supposed to do. And since he has failed to meet any of that in a reasonable timeline, you all have the right to reject it and force this to be taken down. Um, he also did say. That if this was approved, that we would be opening up a can of worms and that we would, other people would expect the same thing to encroach onto the right of way, which right of way is where utilities are held. I mean, if we have to do water repairs, we're going to have to tear up his carport in order to repair our water lines. It's looking at the property, I would, the suggestion would be moved to the side of the house. He would be able to meet his setback and his requirements. It wouldn't be in the front. The other, Thing brought up by the attorney is that if you allow this, he has now been allowed to break covenants. And any other covenants out there is now on the window, whether they're major or not. As soon as you allow one person in the subdivision to violate a covenant, they're gone. I don't. I don't know how a city would even have the jurisdiction to override a covenant, or because those are a permit to the property unless they are extended this or dissolved. Yep. And it, it would take, it would take, I believe, uh, Kelly Armstrong is the one that is still listed as part of HOA. It would take her holding a meeting and a vote of the homeowners in order to dissolve their current covenants as an HOAs. Okay. okay. Any questions for Mr. Jensen? Uh, so the only carport in front of the house, if I go yes. out there, there are a few that have some metal carports on the site 
Yeah. And that, that would be an option for him if, right. if he was willing to move to the side in order to keep it. And that is because of the 30 foot setbacks for right. accessory structures. From that, that truck here is so close to the road. If a car was going down there and swerved, it would be one over the curb. It's going to immediately hit that corner post and they will take that carport out. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Adara, uh, any other questions for staff before I have to ask? Mr. Adara, do you have any questions for the staff? Um, Mr. Bonanato, uh, can you say, do you want me to stand up? Yeah, please stand up so we can hear you. And you can, you can stay, you can be uh, no, just in the When I came and filled out the permit, I signed the page, okay, on uh, the permit. When Lou Baker did to me, or showed me that it was denied, that was stapled on later on with a different date. So she, I don't know if she lied, maybe it's a little white lie, but it has a different date as to the date that I came to apply. And then the day you guys issued it to me was the day we had the meeting. So um, I know you went to my house a couple of times. And you reminded me last time. And uh, <laughs> uh, it stops. Well, I did stop because I wanted to put a carport or a porch attached to it. Well, I couldn't leave it open because, well, we had record of uh, amount of rain. Mr. Mr. Let me just uh, go. Ahead. So these are questions you would have of anything he uh, prevented. You'll have a chance here to speak and give oh, us your side of the story. Sure. Do you have any questions of staff either? Uh, the legal uh, questions that he uh, was actually asked for us today. Right. Any questions from Mr. Baldonado? What he presented? Oh, uh, questions? no, you've already seen him talk to the attorney, right? So, uh, okay. So, if you don't have any questions, then you're going to be up next to speak. So, Vince, thank you. You can have a seat. Okay. And Mr. Adair, you can uh, you can come to the podium and I'm going to swear you in. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Jordan. Mr. Detta, would you please state your name and I'm going to swear you Mr. Detta, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth? I do. So you may begin with your uh, presentation, Mr. Detta. Okay, so as I was stating to Mr. Baldonado, uh, when I filled out the application, I just put the one page, so I signed it. When I came back on uh, February 9th, I think that meeting was the only meeting. As Ms. Baker showed me a sign where it was a uh, second page where it was uh, denied. That was stapled on later on with a different date. I, I'm not even sure if she'd make that date up or what, you know, probably to correlate with the time that he went to my house to tell me to stop. I, I don't know. And um, so uh, he told me to stop, and I, I did, because I wanted to put the carport on the porch, attached to the porch, but I could not leave the trusses uncovered. And we were get, we got a record, record amount of rain now, that would have just ruined the carport. And if I would put a tarp on it, but it didn't look like the rest of us, not the rest of Espanola, but you know, the ghetto side of town, I'm guessing, you know. So I took it upon myself to, to cover, you know, the wood, it was an expensive project, $10,000. Um, as far as the uh, four inch protein and all that, I, this is all freak to me. I, I don't understand any of that stuff, you know, so. Okay. That's about it. I, when he asked to stop, I did. And uh, I would uh, certainly like to continue to put that, uh, attach that porch to it. And even if you guys uh, forced me or whatever, tell me to take it down, I still would like to put a porch there, you know, if possible. But uh, I guess I'd have to go through another uh, a permit. So, okay. That, that's it. That's what okay. I have to do. So, Commission, do we have any questions for Mr. Adair? So, Mr. Adair, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Mr. James. Mr. Adair, um, the civil engineer looked at your place. The civil engineer looked at your place. I'm assuming if they did, it was put the place. I wasn't engineer. there. What are you going to do about uh, your carport at um, the sidewalk? You're going to move it back. 
Well, if I'm your carport is on the sidewalk, are you going to move it back or cut it? Uh, how far over is it on the sidewalk? Well, it's, it's not on your property, property, sir. <clears throat> the front part of your carport is not on your property. The setback is 30 feet from the property line. Okay. So that's quite quite a bit. Right. So okay, that's from Mr. Duties. Basically, where my house is, that's 30 feet from the from the from the road is what you're saying. That's not what I asked you, sir. Pardon me? That's not what I asked you. What? I asked you if you were going to leave your carport on the sidewalk, are you going to cut it back? Well, uh, I'd like to take this further if I could. Uh, maybe try to keep I it up. Okay. He's telling you that he's going to go ahead and finish I, uh, If you tell me to tear it down, I, um, we're probably going to fight this. I think we had this, this discussion last time we met with you. I also mentioned that it was in the sidewalk. And the picture shows it's in the sidewalk, right? That was my only question to you. That was my only question. Your nephew built the porch? Right. You, he built it where you told him to? Yes. And he just built it where he wanted to. Well, the, from what I see on your porch, sir, it huh? could have been moved further back towards your house. How many feet further back? back towards your house. How many feet back? I don't know. You, it's your house. You make sure it. Well, well, that's my house. Question. That's what I wanted to report to. Excuse me. Yeah. What any what any other questions? You need? Any other questions? Well, no, I don't want an answer. Well, he doesn't have an answer at this point. I have. I have. Yes, Mr. Wallen. Mr. Herrera, is there? A, have you considered if you have to dismantle the carport? Is there a possibility you could move it to the side of your house? To the side entrance. That's a possibility. Yeah. I think it could be moved. Uh, probably take some money, uh, but uh, well, everybody, everything, they right? Money, not like you're you're here. Yeah, uh, yeah. If, if you guys uh force me to take it down, then I, I, I you know, I'm obliged to, yeah. No, Miss Bustos, any questions? Well, the only concern I have is if, if it's if we deem that it needs to be moved in right now, as Mr. Martinez and and as it shows, it's not on your property, Mr. Herrera. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I don't think it would even fit on the side. We'd be going at the same thing. Well, again, that'd be okay to do Yeah, that. so, you know, whatever happens this evening, if it has to be moved or has to be done, and, and we understand that you don't especially want it to be moved, mm -hmm. but um, you need to come in and work with planning and zoning and make sure you have the dimensions on how far it has to be from different things, so we don't have to go through this again. So, uh, Mr. Aragon would probably know what to do there at, that, at this point. He's uh, one, yeah, he is one um, option for you, but that's what planning and zoning is here for too, right. is to give you the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So that way, before you go to your builder, you know how many feet it has to be from this structure, or your property line, or whatever. Well, yeah, I'm kind of confused with that. See, I'm paying for the whole property 30 feet that way. Why, why can't I build on there? You know, my, I'm paying taxes on that. Did I not pay taxes on 30 feet? I can explain that to you. Yeah, but are there any questions that you do? Uh, no. So let me let me answer that question for you. Let me ask these two questions, okay? Good. So uh, number one, uh, you made a comment about discrepancy in the dates on the application you filed yes did you do you have a copy or receive an approved application i didn't bring my paperwork but, with me. but you have an approved yes we don't have a copy of an approved application from the city you have a record of an approved application from the city we did not sure yeah no so you so you have an approved application i do not have an approved okay. i did fill out the okay, yeah. permit you filled it out but there's a process that okay. has to go through and you cannot do anything until it's approved mm -hmm. And the reason why you can't do anything until it's approved, and this is an answer your question on the 30 feet. Mm -hmm. We have what are called zoning laws, zoning ordinances, and they control how property is utilized in the city. Now you have two layers of zoning laws, basically. You have your covenants that you came with the property. So when someone, they sold that property, they had rules they wanted all the residents to follow. And there's a copy here, do you have a copy of this? Rules. 
I, I do, yeah. I, I, I do ever read those rules. So if you read those rules, you're going to see where they talk to you about the setbacks. Okay, so that's all the setbacks are established. Okay, in those covenants, they're established. Not everybody that has property has covenants assigned to those properties, but they still have to follow the city's zoning laws. And your property is in what's called an R6 zoning district. And your house, okay, the front setback to the house cannot be any less than 15 feet. Okay. Any accessory structure like your carport cannot be any closer than 30 feet to the end of your property. Okay. So you are not anywhere near 30 feet away. Now, there might be a reason why you see everybody else having their carports in the back or on the side of their houses because they have to follow the setback rules. Now, if you don't want to follow the setback rules, then you can request for an exception, a special use or variance. variance. And that's what you did. But the problem is you built the carport before you got any approvals. And in doing so, you encroached on a part of property that doesn't belong to you. And that's a big deal. Before because what if someone built a shed that was on your property? You pay the taxes for it, but you want them to have a use of your property, even though you're paying the taxes? Well, I don't understand that part. Well, but let me explain to you. Four right? inches, right? It's it's no, 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 it's not four inches. It's you have 30 to be feet. 30 feet away okay. from the property line to meet the setback. You are encroaching over. Uh, I don't. I didn't read the RLI. I thought it said more than four inches. You might say four inches. Let's see. Can you get a copy of that LIR? Yeah. We can present one to you if you don't have one. What does it say? Oh. I read through this a little bit quick. And I, I, four four point six feet. Yeah, four point six feet is what you're encroaching, not four inches. Okay. So you're way over the four inches. I don't know where you're getting the four inches. Uh, okay. I've, I've heard that so, numerous times. So, okay. so, yeah, so let me just explain to you again. You know, you're way over the setbacks already, and you're encroaching over into the property you're not supposed to be on by four and a half feet. That's according to Tom Aragon's report. He's a servant. Okay. So you're you're putting us in one heck of a dilemma, okay? Because we don't want to see anybody have to tear something down. And I have to tell you, I think your carport looks great, but it's not in the right spot. <laughs> so even with a variant that uh, that's I, that you, you explained already, yeah, that, that, that's that, already you know, been. I, I don't. I can only speak for myself, but I don't see how a variant can be granted with that much of, of an exception, because you need thirty feet. And you're four and a half feet over the other uh, on the other property, okay? So that, that I don't know, I'd fly, but in my case, I would not be uh, in favor of that, okay? Number one. So if you uh, are denied, uh, and we're going to tell you that you have to remove it, uh, we want. Um, I hope we'll be able to ask you if you have uh, any type of a, a proposal, maybe to move it. But if you decide to move it, you're going to have to make sure it fits, as Ms. Bustos stated. Mm -hmm. And you're going to meet the setbacks. And if not, before you move it, you're going to have to come in for a variance to follow the process. Okay. So you, you right now you're in a heck of a predicament because we can order whatever the commission votes on tonight. They can order it to be dismantled. If you say no, can I please see about moving it to the side of our property? Um, it's it's doable, believe me. It shouldn't cost that much money to do so, but it would have to fit, and you would have to come get whatever variances you need for setbacks. Because I think the setback, uh, according to your covenants, is is a three foot to the side. Let me just look real quick on your CC large. So accessory structures. Mr. Lina, everybody who lives in the city has to follow these guidelines. Not just it's not just the subdivision, but it's everybody. Like me, I live in San Pedro. I have to follow the same one. Well, with everybody that, does. With that, just down the next street over here. But no, I, I think it's not the next street over. It's on the other side of town, the way of gates or whatever. I see all those people with porches on there in front of you. So, oh, these are older homes. You know. 
And Mr. Uh, uh, again, you have covenants you have to follow first, and it says three yeah. letters. I said that first bet. And if you read your covenants, it states that if you're not having to cut all of these covenants, they, they give you uh, a reason why you don't have to. They can tell you not to follow them in your case. That's up to them. Do you still have to follow the city covenants or city zoning rather? Okay, so and, you, and you, three foot is actually closer than we allow normally. Okay. So you would have to figure out uh, if, uh, is, if that would fit on the side of your house, okay? And uh, you get the proper approvals and applications, permits filled, so you meet the permitting requirements, okay? If, if you would need a uh, exception to the distance, you would have to come in and, and go before the board to get those approved, okay? Okay, now with that being said, this is taking a whole half year. Yes. Just to get to this point. Mm -hmm. If I want to move, do I have to wait another half year? No, you don't, because you're going to be given a pretty quick time on would imagine by the commission to either move it or tear it down. So that's uh, that's going to be kind of what we're going to rule on tonight. Okay. So no, it won't take half a year. Uh, yes, Ms. Bruce's. Sure, I, I just want to make it clear that you referred to the carport as a porch. It's not a porch. No, no, because okay. it's not connected to your house. It would be something altogether different if it was connected to your yes, house. So, uh, the porch is, is an addition that he was going to make. Right. Uh, no, he was talking about attaching a porch. When you still but I, I'm just saying yes. that these are two different things. And there's different rules pertaining to something that's attached to your house and something that is not. But you still have to have 15 feet from the property line to the front of right. the, that village. Yeah. But if it's attached to the house and it becomes part of the house, you'd have to have 15 feet from the property line to the front of that, yeah. that building. My uh, steps that go from my front door to, you know, the gravel, now, is that 15 feet from the road to the front porch? So I could, in case I want to fill the porch, you if know? You, if you read your covenants, they don't include non covered porches. So if it's going to have a cover, then you're right. It would have to be from the front of that porch. But if it's attached to the court porch, it'd have to be 50 feet from the front of that court porch. The porch. Well, you're, there, calling yeah. it, you're calling it a porch, but it's a car porch. Yeah, this part of the car is a car porch. A porch is something totally different. Of course, the way you have your steps covered from the rain, you can sit out there and watch the cars drive by, whatever you want to do. That's a porch. What you built is a carport. <clears throat> yeah, carport. yeah. It, and it's not covered because he was stating, this uh, gentleman over here stating that, uh, that they had to dig or whatever. I think that was his word. So it had to go through there, but it's not covered. So it would bear no difference to uh, if they had to. Well, to uh, go through there or not, you know. Well, it wouldn't make a difference because if there was a, a catastrophic uh, issue with that plumbing, they're going to need a pretty big area, like 20 feet, to work on. That's why they require you to have a 30 foot setback. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's where setbacks come into play. Do you have anything else you'd like to add to the commission? No. Um, no, I'm good. Um, no, you can, you can give me a decent time to dismantle well, what, it, right? I'm not telling you what's going to happen. We have the five, five commissioners here tonight that get to vote on this, okay? So we're going to see what the motions are made, and then they're going to make the motion with their condition one way or the other. I, I'm not, I can't tell you what they're going to do. And this is okay. going to happen now? Can I have it tonight, yeah. Okay. So if you're done with presenting, uh, staff, is there any questions of the applicant? No, sure. No. No. You may have a seat and thank you for your presentation. Um, I know there's no one else in the room. Well, there are some gentlemen. Is there anybody else in the community that would like to speak either for or against the project? Anybody else who likes to speak for or against? Okay. That being said, I'm going to close the public comments. And I am going to so I am going to at this point for the public lines, I'm going to ask at this time if we can have a motion on the floor and open this up for discussion with commissioners. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'll 
Well, I'm gonna make the motion to that we accept the recommendations made by by staff that uh, that uh, the water board did with its map tools. Sorry, I'm just uh, sure that's going to go to city council for the GX. So. Do I have a second for that? I'll second. Okay, we have a first by Joe and a second by Ms. Bustos. Um, for discussion, um, uh, can I say a few things and then I'll open up to your commission? Uh, no one likes to see people lose an investment they need at all. And I can tell you again, and I'll say this, Mr. Ed, I've said this to others, that carport is pretty. It's, it's, it looks nice, okay? There's nothing wrong with how it looks. And I know exactly uh, what you're trying to accomplish. You're trying to have some coverage for your vehicles. And you have some nice vehicles. Congratulations, nothing wrong with that, okay? Um, Rather than just totally tearing it down, um, would the commission maybe consider amending motions or further discussion on allowing some time for Mr. Herrera it would be, I would suggest no one 30 days for Mr. Herrera to, if he says, yes, I want to move it to the side of my property, you would have to confirm that it's going to fit. You'd have to get the proper permits from planning and zoning, whether other permits are not prepared. And then he could get that relocated rather than just tearing it down. Because it would be hard to, what are you going to do with it if he tears it down other than it be destroyed? There are ways of moving that. And if you have a good contractor, Mr. Herrera, they would run some braces to support those legs. They'd cross brace it. They would jack it up. You'd pour your new pads. Okay. And then you just move it over with a flatbed trader and set it in place. There's ways to do that. Okay. I'm not telling you how to do it. Not an engineer, I'm just telling you what I know and how it probably could be done. So if that's something that you were to consider doing, um, maybe we can allow you to say yes or no, because if not, then we're gonna vote on the uh, motion that's been made for you to have to dismantle that. Um, can I speak? Yeah, please, oh. that's why I asked you. It's, uh, well, it was custom built, so I could just tear it down piece by piece and put some of it on the side. You know, it wouldn't take that much longer. And then the rest on the back, another carport or not a carport or porch. Now, with that, do I need permits for the back? Yes, you need permits for anything you build. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just ask that question. Understood. So, with that lumber that I got there presently, I could, I could put a carport on the side with their permission. And two porches on the back. That's uh, that's your house. It's your and, uh, You've got to follow the covenants yeah. and the rules. Yeah, that would uh, okay. that would uh, yeah that would take care of all that. Uh, I'm not losing any uh, any uh, construction or okay. anything. You know, okay. uh, wood or anything. But if, I have a point here. Yeah. If you would put it to the side of the house, is there a requirement of how many feet the, the that this garage would have to be? The, the the and I don't know if it fits. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He would have to fit so, it all sure. That's right. He has to work with the staff yeah. to make sure that he needs those. So we would have to custom fit on the, on the side, and tear it down completely, and then custom fit on the side. With the recommendation that they'll be giving to you, the staff will be saying you meet the requirements or you don't meet the requirements to allow people to put it on the side right or you may have to put it in the back so yeah so be aware that there could be some other issues that come up okay, okay. well it's not going to be lifted up and put somewhere it's going to be torn down okay and right. break up yeah, that's, and that's, that's up. totally up to you <clears throat> so any other uh discussion on the motion mm -hmm. So with that uh, being said, uh, I will call for the vote. Would you do a roll call vote, please? Yep. And you can repeat the motion if you can, please. Is it Jamie? Uh, Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Sorry. The motion was made by Joe Salazar to tear it down. Dismantle. And move to, dismantle. Dismantle. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> dismantle and move to a council, I believe. It also did include the follow staff's recommendation. Is that correct? Yes. We're basically following staff's recommendation. Following staff recommendation? Yes. Okay. 
Um, do you want to do a time frame on when the just how before that? I'll leave that up to the people that are there now. Well, that's I, all. I good. think we need to give us time frame. Uh, so go ahead, so please. I may, can I add, uh, suggest that you give the gentleman at least two weeks? That's fine. Okay. Would you amend your motion to that? I'll make my motion to include the, the timeline of two weeks. And I'll second. Second. Okay, you have no time. I'll amend my second. second. Okay. Yes, Mr. No, that's okay. fine. I was going to suggest something, but that's. Go ahead. Well, I thought 30 days would be more. 30 okay. days? Okay. It's not real easy to just tear something down. Right. I, I, and I, I, do it properly. I, I, but I mean, that's what I'm asking for so, your feedback. So I, I would suggest 30, that 30 30 days if, if you're amenable to amend your motion. Yeah, I am. I am. And I'll amend my sentence. Thank you. All right. So we'll be able to call the roll call vote for the moments. Chairman J.R. Chilvia. For the motion. Commissioner Christine Bustos. For the motion. Commissioner J.D. Martinez. For the motion. Commissioner Joe Salazar. For the motion. Commissioner Roland Borrego. For the motion. Motion carries. Thank you. So the commission is ruled. Before you do that. Did I decide? Oh. Well, Mr. Well, Hedas, you nice. have the right to appeal, right? And that is your right. I would never tell you the AMA. That's totally up to you. You have the right to appeal this decision to the city council. You would want to get with the uh, city manager to do that. Right. Okay. And, and you have, have a number of days to do that. Yeah. Uh, what is the number of days? Right? Yeah. Yeah. 30 days. 45 days. 45 days. Oh, who's the city manager? Right there. Right oh, there. You are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, that's to appeal, and then uh, so that'll give me some time to save some money to tear it down. That's not, I just can't dismantle, dismantle, <laughs> dismantle. <laughs> can't take the chase off to it. Okay, with that. So, can I make a point with you, sir? Yeah, so we're going to put a time on the phone the public hearing. Uh, it is now uh, 6 44. Yeah. Okay, before we go on, uh, our other business, you're welcome to stay as long as you like, okay? Um, please read your covenants. And the reason why, if you look at what the covenants say, your HCCRs, if you send a request to them, and you keep a copy, you send it to Kelly Armstrong, if she does not answer you in 30 days, you can read what your covenants say, okay? So you might not have to be dealing with that. If it's not enacted, that part of it, yes. okay, it, it's going to might be enacted. You don't have to worry about what the covenant is saying, okay. But read the process, okay. You have the right to do that. I'm not an attorney, but this time you read your documents, follow what your documents say, and you might find that you uh, don't necessarily, uh, if you don't get an answer from them, okay, it might be in your favor. Okay. So I've tried getting a hold of Ms. Armstrong. Well, so just follow the process to give, send it in writing. You're right. supposed to send in a request, follow the rules. Okay. If you don't get an answer back and you, you send it certified mail, so there's record that you sent it, and you know that the clock starts ticking, and with the timeline in those covenants, that works in your favor and their favor. Okay. So please read those. I can be to your advantage. Now, in regards to the city zoning laws, you got to follow those. So once you decide what side you're gonna build, where you're gonna put it, whatever you're gonna build it for you, it has to have enough knowledge to know how to measure and make sure it, what your building is gonna look like, okay, and where it's gonna be. Because if it doesn't fall within the setback rules of the city for R6, then you need to come in before the board and get a variance or special use uh, to that process before you build. Don't go put it up and then you have to dismantle it again. Okay. Okay, so I paid seventy five dollars for that permit. Do I get reimbursed now? Seventy five dollars. I don't know about that. You have to ask the city manager. But I don't think so. Oh, okay. Re fee. Oh. Yeah. But if you want to go the other route, we can discuss. If you want to go the legal route, and go a different route, we can discuss. Maybe yeah. yeah. So anything, you let, so anything else you'd like to ask us before we go to our meeting? Thank you. You know what? And again, we appreciate the fact that you're trying to beautify the valley. Uh, I commend you for that. It's sad. That's why it's so horrible when things aren't done right. You got a problem. Because none of us here want to see you hurt. None of us. 
I didn't take pleasure in making that motion. No, not one of us want to see you hurt, Mr. Not one of us. I, I, it is it's painless to have to say something like this to you. Okay? So please, uh, good luck uh, with your bill. That's the council of the higher body than us. But us, in our case, we have to follow the rules they create. So, so I'll get a hold of you then. Yeah. All right. I'm so I'm to say something. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys have a good night. So I, I wish I could speak better. Well, you can if you want to. Thank She's you. Doctor, this is my husband. Thank you. Thank you so much, for your help and for directing him in the right hand. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Paul. If you want to be on the side, probably about a 12 foot. Or in the back, you can go more. You know, yeah. Because so, he has a path through. Yeah. Okay. Well, he does have a drive to gate on one side, so you can actually go to one car. Mm -hmm. Are there any matters from the staff uh, for us? I don't know. Yes, Jay. Well, let's let me get permission first, okay? A second. But let's, let's go to the staff. So, okay. Um, Jordan, can you please announce to the commission about the new planning zoning director? Yes. Rebecca Seawall, she will start May 3rd. Say again, the name. Rebecca Seawall. She will be here May 3rd, will be her first name. Spell the last name. S E A W A L L. She previously was at the county. She was actually the planner for the county. Um, she's been in the valley for quite a while now. Um, she's finishing up her master's degree in planning at UNM. Or she should be done with her master's degree next May. So she comes with a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. So I think she will be a good fit. Hopefully, y'all don't tear her apart. <laughs> um, and the, the May's meeting, we're going to swap them around. So normally, y'all do the meeting at the first of the month, and you do the workshop at the second half of the month. In May, we're going to do the workshop at the first part of the month, the actual meeting on the second part. Can I just follow that? So we're probably going to not have it. First meeting because okay. we'll be at the training for the first part of the month, and that'll be kind of a workshop meeting. Okay. So we're just going to have the regular right. meeting the okay. Thursday. So there is one item right now on the agenda, and with uh, Miss Seawall starting essentially on the third, and this meeting was scheduled for the eleventh. That's not enough time for her to figure out what's going on, and so by moving it to the end of the month, it gives her more time because it is a replat zone situation. That'll be right for you. So, any any other questions for staff? Uh, so, uh, Jordan, if I can, um, I would like to. Yeah, you're you're next. Okay, okay no, but he's asking oh, about the. Train. I have a question for the staff. Okay, well, okay, go on first. Sure. What happened to the training we were going to have in May for the planning and zoning people? Y'all are going to. Schedule now the thirteenth. Schedule the thirteenth. Schedule from May the third through the fifth. Yeah, third, fourth, and fifth. Yes, sir. We've we've paid your entry fee. We got your hotels. We got everything. So who's going to send us the IT there? That's all. Uh, staff will send it to you. So they make they pay for everything. The upper level for both. So Vince is going to send us the itinerary so we know what. So as soon as we get the room confirmations from Paradise Travel, we will send okay. each one of y'all. No, that's all the way to my second question. What's your second question? Okay, this is what Vince said. Uh, you know, sometime back we were asked as planning and zoning to help the, the people of PNZ with stuff that they see around the city. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yes, sir. Uh, Every time I go to Walmart with my wife, I go on Perry Drive, which is just over here. Mm -hmm. And I see on the left side on um, Angel Street, a property that has about an average of about 20 trucks there, including a, a truck that belongs to Robert's towing. And it looks to me like they're doing some kind of work there because they have something that lifts up automobiles. Do they have a permit for uh, doing that kind of stuff or can, do they need something? So the property owners there, they came in for a permit to build a carport over their lift. Uh, me and Lou went out there and we counted 20 vehicles. We made contact with the property owners. We asked them 
why do they have so many cars and is this lift have have anything to do with like the business that they're running so the guy he states that he gets cars from albuquerque he brings them here he fixes them and then he flips them does he does he get paid for it yes does he have a city license to do that does he have something which actually revenue any service no so lou mentioned to him in order to have a business in a residential area he needed to come before you guys it was scheduled. It was going to come in. They fill out the application and everything. They came in and talked to Lou. They said, we don't want to go to the planning commission meeting. We're not going to run a business out of there anymore. But what we're going to do is we're starting to move the vehicles back to Albuquerque and we'll flip them out over there. Lou said you could only have, I think there was a number of five or seven vehicles in the yard. They have to be registered. They have to be running. I've noticed what, you, what you're mentioning. I've noticed more vehicles have been going in so now it's like we're gonna have to have code enforcement go out there and say what's going on i think the count is 16 there today i believe that yeah so so they does he have a deadline they, they, they basically feast the city saying that they were not going to run a business out there as long as they got determined to put a carpet over the lift so that is one of the reasons why he was issued a permit to cover that lift but then he went ahead and started pulling more cars back in. So we we might run into a situation. I don't think we have an ordinance that limits the number sure, of cars. Yeah, so they're registered. Do have a business in the city? Yeah, I don't think so. Yes, we still do. They're all registered. Well, business in the city moment. Let me make a comment. This and and, and I'm going to make it. Well, are we still on the record? Uh, we're still. Uh, we're still. Well, I'm going to make it anyway because I, I'm getting ready to have a call for a meeting with the city manager and planning and selling and code enforcement. I have a, uh, I have an auto dealership in Espanola. There's three, probably three licensed dealers, but there's probably 10 places that operate selling cars. They are not able to do that without being licensed by the Department of Motor Vehicle. They have to qualify for that. They have to have a bond. They have to have a place of business. They have to have a city county license. And, and several different other things. When Richard, what was his name? Huber. Huber. Yeah, was here. He started looking into that. In fact, I brought the motor vehicle representatives down so mm -hmm. that they could edify him and understand what the motor vehicle code says, what the requirements are. And then we lost him and got someone else. And then uh, the gentleman that got shot, unfortunately, and killed, he started to look into it and nothing's happened. I was waiting for you. For, uh, planning director to be hired so that I could, uh, not only myself, but the other leaders in town that are licensed could meet. And the city has the authority to uh, make sure that they're not operating without a license and without a permit and without being licensed by, by the state. This is happening all over the state, not just here. But I'm concerned because I live in the city, I have a business in the city. Mm -hmm. And not only is it, against the motor vehicle code and in violation of city ordinances. But the problem is that when, when a licensed motor vehicle dealer sells a car, you sell it and you collect the motor vehicle excise tax, not a gross receipt tax, a motor vehicle excise tax. The tax on that is 4% now because it went up about a year ago, it used to be 3%. And then you also collect uh, through motor vehicle or from the purchaser, the registration and licensing fees. But that money that's collected in, in the excise tax goes into the general fund and into different portions and then allocate it back to the counties and the cities based on whatever proportionate rate they're supposed to get. When you're selling a vehicle off the street with an open title, for example, all of that revenue is being lost because you're not licensed. And what happens is these guys bring in cars from all over the place get somebody to sign off on a title, not date it, not fill out the title, and bypass all of that. So not only is it against the law to do it, but and against the city ordinances, but our cities are not receiving, this city's not receiving the revenue that, sh that it's entitled to if they're <laughs> licensed and they were doing it properly. You have, I don't know who the code enforcement officers are now. The biggest problem that we have throughout the state is that motor vehicle doesn't have the enough personnel to go into every city and around the state and enforce this. That's been a problem for years. The cities, some have, 
the resources to do it. I don't know if the city of Espanola has more than one or two enforcement officers or code enforcement officers. Yeah, two. But if not, I mean, the city's losing a lot of revenue. All right. So I just wanted to make that comments. And, you know, I can explain it further and sit down with you and give you the actual statutes and what have you. But I know that the place you're talking about, but there's several places. You know what I mean? I think the place that you're talking about, if you issued a permit for him to come to the lift, That's you know, he got one on the city because basically what they're doing is they bring in cars, they repair them, they do whatever is necessary, and then they flip them and sell. And while that guy was fighting with or trying to make a spill to Lou that he's going to get rid of the vehicles, but he still wants to cover his lift so he can work on his own vehicles, he went ahead and ratted his neighbor behind him. So if you're going down Fairview, Fairview Lane and you look towards the Bosque, you'll see another lift back there. And this guy did not get permits to cover his lift. Yeah. And he well, <laughs> so his neighbor ran him also. There's another guy we got well, well, if you drive down all over on Chitos on both sides, you'll see the cars parked all over. Some of the houses <laughs> out there by Gills Reynolds or what have you, they have 10, 15 cars. You notice them always because they've got white chalk written all over the windshields. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes they get a little smart. If you put a little pressure on it, they'll change the phone number or use a girlfriend's phone number or whatever. But they the people doing it all. And that's different than for sale by owner. Like if I was yeah, the law, the law states that you can sell, uh, an individual person can sell up to three vehicles, personal vehicles in a given year. Personal vehicles. Now, if you're doing it year after year after year, well, then you're not just selling your personal vehicle. That's the exception in it. But other than that, you have to have a bond, you have to be licensed, you have to be approved by motor vehicle. Uh, the, you uh, would have to have an office, no? You have to have an office, you have to, in, in fact, now they're requiring uh, newer places to have paved parking lots and paved pavement for the parking lot. You have to have a sign that is so high and visible from a certain length of, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of requirements. It's not that easy. It's not yeah. that difficult. And then every year you have to renew that license. And there's some continuing education classes that you have to take every year before you can even renew it. So it's a process. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. Thank you, Commissioner. Anything else, Mr. JD? No. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions of staff? Yeah, I'd like to bring something up. So, Jordan. Um, we uh, heard an issue uh, with Marty's Meadows about the uh, proper planning of the subdivision. And we know they recorded, they didn't use an actual survey, they used something else, okay? So I, I would like to share with you the minutes of that meeting. I, I'd like to come to you. Uh, basically, the Planning Commission grouped that process, which that's still when uh, our, our buddy was still here before he passed away. And but it never, I believe it's never gone to council. We signed off on if it has to, or at least the mayor's signature on that survey so they can get it reported. And they can do it. It's really hurting a lot of the part of the middle of the residents. Uh, so a, a plat was submitted. Yeah, the reason why it came to uh, us, uh, General, Mr. General Sunderland, the surveyor, he did submit that. Um, you have one red line on it. So I believe that he said that he's going to bring it in next week, early next week. Okay. And she said that could be done administratively without yeah, going to see a comment. He can sign off on it. Yeah, but it hadn't been done. And that's pretty nice. Yeah. So if you like, I'll let to share my minutes with you. Mm -hmm. So you know, and then that way uh, you, you can make sure this thing is done. Because right? all those people, money's better if they try to sell a home and having problems. Well, actually, I was from planning and zoning the first time when Marty's Meadows came in, they had a survey in a fact. Yeah, but they didn't uh, record the survey. <laughs> and I don't know how you know, the people utility so, easement. Yeah, let's sign off on the utility easement to pass the survey. <laughs> anyway. Because I thought Marvin had done it. Marvin's brain. Well, no, we don't. Oh, yeah. I thought he signed off on that. Not a record, so. Okay, so anything else from the commission? Uh, this anything else from the staff? Not being a drink.